Hello and welcome to this AutoCAD tutorial video for AutoCAD 2017. In this video we're going to be looking at rendering. So we're going to see how we can take our three-dimensional models and make them a little bit more uh, pleasing. So let's start off like this. So what I've done here is I've created a simple 3D model which is this Geneva wheel uh, with a rod through the middle of it and what I've also done is kind of created this backdrop if you like, this kind of light box uh, that the uh, object will sit in and this is going to help us to uh, construct um, the rendering. It's just going to give it a slightly more pleasing background and demonstrate a couple of uh, nice uh, points about the rendering software. So what we've got to think about is how we're going to start rendering this. So if we come to the visualize uh, tab up here on the ribbon and then go to the render panel here you see you've got a, an option here, render to size. By dropping down the box that's below that, we can see we've got a number of options as to uh, how large our rendering of this will be. So basically what this is gonna do, it's gonna uh, produce a realistic uh, two-dimensional picture, if you like, uh, of this three-dimensional object. So if we just leave it on its basic setting at the moment, which is there, and just click the button above here, it will very quickly render this for us, okay? So we can see that this is already this is starting to look a little bit more lifelike. Now we're quite a long way from the object, uh, and that's because this will render whatever view you have on your screen. So if we zoom into this now, you can see that actually, although it looks pretty good from a distance, doesn't look too bad, and you can see there's some nice shadowing effect going on here. When we're getting close to that, that becomes uh, not great in terms of quality. It doesn't give us a very clear image of what that looks like, and that's because we've got uh, our rendering settings in a certain way. So let's close that down. So what we're going to do first of all is to try and make this start to look a little bit more realistic. We're going to give uh, all of these objects here uh, different materials. So if you go to the materials panel here uh, and select materials browser, now there's a couple of ways to, to look through the different kind of metals that we can use, different materials that we can use. If we uh, drop down these menus here, you can see we've got lots of different types of materials that we can render this in, we can render this with. So I want my Geneva wheel to be made out of metal. So if we go here to the metal panel, uh, we've got options. We can either select aluminium fabricated or steel, or we can scroll through this uh, and pick uh, an option uh, directly from here. So let's have a look at something that will look quite interesting. Uh, we could make it uh, a nice anodized uh, material. So if we select this anodized blue option, now if you click and hold uh, and drag onto here, it will add this uh, coloring, this material finish, to the object that you hover over. So if I click that there, uh, that will now make that uh, of that material. Uh, we can change it if we want to, so I might change it to anodized red, for example. That's another option. Okay. So uh, we've got that, that on there now. And now if we very quickly just do a quick rendering again, you can see that it's adopted this anodized red uh, color. So you can see that that's starting to look like that. So as you can see, this just takes uh, a few seconds to render because we've got it on a fairly low setting. And again, if we zoom in, we very quickly start to lose resolution on that. But from a distance, that's starting to look okay. So let's go back to anodized blue because that looked quite nice on there. So that's now anodized blue. Now let's make our uh, rod here through the middle. We'll use a piece of plastic for that. Obviously we wouldn't use plastic in real life for uh, the uh, center axle of a Geneva wheel but this is just to illustrate the different options that are available. So what we'll go for is we'll go for a nice uh, transparent option uh, and we'll maybe go for uh, let's go for transparent light grey. That'll look quite good on that rod there in the middle. Now our backdrop here, we're going to render this, we're going to assign a material to this. Uh, probably some kind of plastic uh, is good. If you go with uh, a bright white finish uh, for this, uh, then this can start to look a little bit intense, uh, the difference. So if you uh, select here uh, a smooth uh, probably uh, light grey will look quite good on here. So if we assign that to that object there, 
then that is now uh, going to appear slightly different. So again, if we just quickly click the render button and see what it looks like. Yeah, so we've got this nice grey backdrop and again we can make that whatever we want. And you can just about make out in the middle there that that uh, rod is now a piece of clear plastic is how that looks. Now obviously this view that we're looking at here isn't giving us an awful lot of detail about the object. So what we want to do is we can uh, zoom in on this so we can change our point of view. We can zoom right in and have a look at this in a bit more detail. So now if we render that you can see that we've got a closer view of the object that's coming up. So this looks quite rough to start with, but then as it continues the rendering process, what it does is it starts to uh, refine the detail on here. So it renders it to a higher and higher degree. So the number of levels that it renders to uh, indicates how good this will start to look. So you can make out the detail now on this. This is starting to look quite nice as an anodized object. And the uh, rod in the middle there you can make out is a piece of clear plastic and it's it's kind of you can see through it and see reflections in it so it's quite quite nice and accurate so that took 30 seconds to render to level five there so that's looking quite good and again you can see if we zoom in we start to lose a little bit more detail now it may be that you want to have a very specific view of this at the moment we're sort of looking at this fairly uh, randomly this object so we can start to to change this and we can start to to mix this up a little bit one way of doing this is to create camera views. So we'll close the materials browser down because we're using that now. So we can start to create render views on here. So let's close that down. And what we can do is we can start to add cameras to this now. So if we again come to the visualize uh, tab and go to the camera panel and click create camera, what we're going to do is we're going to position a camera in a very specific position. I want it right on the top corner of this box. So what I'm going to do is first of all go to my right view and I'm going to create a camera that's going to sit there to start with. So I'm just going to line it up with that point there. So now I've clicked where the camera is. It's asking me, well, where do you want the uh, camera to be focused? Where do you want it to go to? And I actually want it to focus on the center point of my object here. So I'm going to uh, select this down here and I'm going to tell it I want it focused on that point there. Now you can see that the camera has disappeared but again go to the command line. Uh, if you're happy with where your uh, camera is just hit space and the camera will now appear up there and you can see that it's focusing on our object. So if we now go back to our uh, view like this we can see that the camera is sitting on that top view and if we select that camera we'll get a little camera window come up which is quite handy but that's not quite where I want my camera to be so what I'm going to do now is go to my back view and I'm going to move this in the x-axis so let's just select the camera I'm going to move it in the x-axis and I want it to line up with the end of that object there now can you see it's rotated to follow the object as we wanted it okay so we can change the target location because it's not quite where I want it to be so let's move that around until it's sitting about there and it's centralized on the, the top of that object now. So if I just close uh, that camera preview down, you can see though we're sort of centered on the object, which is quite good, that's what we want. And again, if we now go to uh, our view here, we can see we've got the camera pretty much in the position that we want it in. And when you select that, you can see where it's pointing to and it will show you a little preview up here. Now you might think, well, that's not quite zoomed in enough. I need to get a little bit closer on this. So in order to achieve that, uh, if you have the camera selected and select PR for properties, what that does is it brings up uh, the properties uh, bar here. So what we can now do is if we change the lens length, we can start to get a better idea of uh, how this is going to look. So if we change this to say, 75 then what it does is that effectively zooms in on the object so that's zoomed in on that now so again if we look at our camera preview you can see we've zoomed in a bit and if we change this again we could change this to 100 uh, we're zoomed in a little bit more I think I'm going to go for 125 and that's going to do for me so we've got uh, we zoomed into 125 now so you can see there that that's given us a nice clear view of our object there. 
So that's great. So now uh, we can close that down uh, and we can uh, finish up with the camera. We've got that aimed as we like. Now in order to get an idea uh, of what the camera will look like, if we go here to custom view, right click, uh, sorry, left click on that and drop down custom model views and go to camera one, that will show us exactly what that camera is looking at. So it's looking, it's focused on this Geneva wheel and particularly on the top uh, of the peg there. So that's quite nice. Okay, so what we can now do, uh, because we've got this view that we want, we can now get this to render and it will render at the angle that we're at. So that's quite nice. So we'll let this render. And again, you can see uh, the quality is improving uh, as the uh, rendering goes up through the levels. What's quite nice over here as well, you can see that you've got uh, this shadow here, which shows the uh, center part of the uh, Geneva wheel, the rod through the middle there, and you can kind of make out that it is uh, clear in there, which looks quite good. So that's busy rendering away, we're nearly done there. Come up to about 30 seconds. We'll talk about the quality of the rendering uh, in a moment. So that's good, so we've got uh, our view of it. now. This is all in shadow at the minute, and it's creating some quite interesting kind of uh, views and stuff, which would be quite useful if you were rendering models of buildings and such. But what we want to do now is get a better view of this. So what we now need to do is start adding some lights to this, because at the minute it's using kind of a, a, an imaginary sun. It's using a, a fake sun to uh, illuminate this. So what we want to do now is create a light. So our options are point, spot, distance, or web light. So I'm going to create a point light. Uh, and again, I'm going to get this started off. I'm going to pop it here to begin with. Okay, and I'm happy with where that is. So that's that. So you can see, because that's right on there, all of this is in shadow and it's illuminating all of this round here, which looks a little bit odd. So what we'll do is we'll set this so that it's in the center of here. So again, we can just move this uh, just as we would any other object. So I'm going to move that to there. And then I'm going to move that so that it's uh, parallel to that like that and then that's probably going to be sitting a little bit low so we can pull this up uh, make it a bit higher so i'm just going to pull this up to about there so that's probably going to look quite good again if you go to the properties panel uh, and select the light there's again a number of things that you can change on here so the lamp color that's quite a nice one to change we can change that to uh, any kind of light and you can see the changing effect of that uh, i like an incandescent lamp that looks quite good and uh, we can change how uh, intense the lamp is so we can make it brighter we can change that to 2000 which has made it uh, brighter or we can set it back to a uh, thousand if we like uh, 1000 and that's made it quite a bit dimmer but uh, the 1500 is not a bad place to start so 1500 that's quite good so again uh, we've changed quite a bit now and what we'll find actually is that when we render this this is going to make uh, a significant difference to how this looks we'll have lost all that shadowing that we had before so once again uh, if we want to go to the view that the camera has custom view custom model views camera one and that gives us uh, the view that we set up from the camera and now if we render that image as we had and we'll see what it looks like now so you can see that this has changed quite significantly from how it was before. So uh, the shadowing's changed, uh, the lighting has changed. We could add more lights to this to create different effects, but this is looking quite nice at the moment. This is, uh, this is pretty good. So again, we lose resolution as we zoom in. That's always gonna happen because this isn't creating a model. You can't move this round or zoom it round. It's just creating a two dimensional image uh, of what we've got here. So that's quite, uh, quite handy. So that's the uh, rendering complete. So you can see that's changed that completely. Uh, so just a word now on uh, a couple of things. If you want to go back and have a look at all the different rendering renderings that you've done, uh, go to the rendering uh, panel here, drop down the bar and select render window. That will bring that up. And then if we go whole screen on that, uh, we should be able to view all of our uh, renderings that we've done if we click this little down arrow here it will bring up all of the previous renders that we've done so we can see how it kind of changes uh, and the changes that we've made as we've gone along so that's quite good 
so you can have a look at all of those. Obviously, if you want to save one of these, click Save As, and then save it as a file in a relevant position, and you'll be able to access it again in the future. Uh, when it comes to rendering to size, obviously we've been doing fairly low scale uh, sizes. You can make it uh, any of these options. Uh, obviously, 1080p will uh, be a full HD TV resolution. And then if you want to create this on an A4 or an A3 drawing, you've got these options down here as well. So just bear in mind, obviously, the, the bigger the pixels, the bigger the drawing, uh, the more, uh, the longer it's going to take to render. Uh, there's also a couple of options here. You can render in low, medium or high levels. So this is how many times basically it kind of refines the drawing and how good it looks, the quality of it. Uh, it can also be set so that it will render for a period of time rather than a number of times. So coffee break quality renders for 10 minutes, lunch for 60 and overnight will render for 12 hours and that will give you absolutely uh, phenomenal resolution. Uh, but bear in mind, obviously, once that's started, uh, that needs to be left running to uh, to achieve that. So generally speaking, medium's pretty good. Uh, and again, just depending on what you want to print this out on uh, or what you want to a drawing you want to add it to, will define which one of these that you use. Uh, just as an example, I did a high quality rendering earlier, uh, and I rendered it for A4, and it took me a drawing like this. It took a about an hour and 20 minutes to render uh, to that level. But it did look really good when it was finished. So that is some information on rendering. I hope this has been helpful and I encourage you to, to play around, change lighting types, change lighting levels, use several different cameras. You can have more than one camera positioned and switch between them. Uh, again, just using the custom view and going to camera one, camera two, camera three, etc. Uh, rendering really does bring your models to life. So it's, it's a good skill uh, to develop. So I hope this has been of value and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Thank you very much. Goodbye.